Good evening. I want to welcome you to the Halifax County Board of Commissioners meeting on this April 15th. And we all know what this day is. A absolutely. Thank, thank you for being here. Um, do appreciate your presence. Um, of course, uh, this is our second meeting this month, and it's a chance we could, could have a third one, but, uh, but we'll see. Um, at this time, the meeting will officially come to order. Invocation will be given by Vice Chair Linda Brewer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance um, in unison. Those of you who wish to participate, please stand. Hey, we pray. Gracious God, as I look around this room today, I see so many people who give and give of themselves, who contribute at times they're not even aware that they're contributing to the good of their communities and citizens. We thank you for each of these people. We thank you for allowing us to gather and invoking your name. We ask that all we say and do be pleasing in thy sight. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. I trust that my colleagues have had an opportunity to review the agenda. I will so entertain a motion for the adoption, if that's your pleasure. Motion by Commissioner Davis. There a second? Second. Second by uh, Commissioner Webb. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Next item is the conflict of interest. In accordance with the Halifax County Board Commissioner uh, Rules of Procedure and the North Carolina General Statute Section 153A-44, it's the duty of every member present to vote on all matters coming before the board unless there is a conflict of interest as determined by the board or by law. Uh, does any board member have a known conflict of interest with respect to matters coming before the board today? Commissioner Smith. No conflict, sir. No conflict. No conflict. No conflict. No conflict. No conflict. Madam Clerk, let the record so reflect that the uh, six commissioners present do not have any conflict with matters coming before us tonight. And also, too, I want to make a note that um, our regular clerk to the board, um, Andrea Wiggins, she had death in her family. Uh, her brother-in-law passed, and certainly we want to keep her lifted in our thoughts and prayers. And we are appreciative of having Ms. Faison, who is our deputy clerk to the board, uh, working tonight. Thank you for being here. Okay, now we move to a real good reason to be here tonight. Uh, special recognitions. At this time, we're going to ask uh, Dr. Mike Williams to come forward along with North Carolina Representative Michael Ray. And we do thank uh, uh, Representative Ray and his able assistant, Sister Cheryl, for being with us tonight. Thank you all. Yeah, every time he's been called to do things, he's stepped up. 
you know, we had some struggles at the community college, and I called Dr. Williams, and the governor wanted somebody else, and I wanted someone to step some kind of level the community college office that he was going through some transition to some tribulation. And so I recommended Dr. Williams to the governor. And through that transition, you know, we lost Dr. Williams, you know, by death and by sickness really quick. And our community college, Along the hand, also behind our school system, our community college is definitely pillar of our community. And they give a lot of people the opportunity to go back and moms and individuals go back to be schools, to do things. And Dr. Williams, guess who was head that last year? So the chairman of the board. It wasn't about him personally, but he was the chairman of the board. And I talked to him personally on some things, and one thing about it, you know, they had some school board issues, they had some individuals that resigned or whatever, and I spoke to him. And one thing about it, he's always been faithful. He's never said, you know, yeah, that's the buddy system. You know, I want that person there. And he's always listened. He's an opportunity to end the day. And I think Vernon, I think, is Vernon, you serve a school board with you? I did. Mm -hmm. I felt tired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, he said, well, I appreciate your input. And at the time, you know, we'll make a lot to So I'm here tonight to present the order all the time. Dr. Williams on behalf of Governor Cooper. Um, we put it in from our office, and I think um, some of the individuals up here wrote a recommendation of them. But I couldn't, you know, I've given them out to a lot of people, and I've even given them some people that I really didn't think they deserve. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir, I do. <laughs> and it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I am a recipient too, but it's not me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> she said if she goes to school bus for you, you're the one can be a professor. <laughs> <laughs> and that was really interesting. But you know, again, you know, you did not you know take much time. You know, it's an honor to be at night because you know, my mom worked with your wife and I've seen the things you've done in our community, you know, what you're doing with one graduate school system, one county DPI, and then what you're doing with the academy, what you helped play part of at community college. Now, let, 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 me, let me just say this. Um, this is the way we're going to do it, y'all. Um, I'm going to ask for comments from any of the county commissioners and the county manager. Um, after that, we're going to pause for a few minutes. Representative Ray, we, we're going to do this real quick because I know you may have somewhere to go. Okay, but we're going to do this real quick. Anyway, um, we, we're going to be taking pictures. Uh, but we're going to pause, um, you know, after we make comments, 
and, and then, we, of course, we'll allow you to make comments. But we're going to take pictures, let you and Representative Ray uh, take pictures first. And then after that, the commissioners will end up taking pictures with you. And then we're going to have your family come up and take pictures. Then we're going to be at ease for about five minutes. So at this time, I'm going to ask commissioners, and I know Ms. Johnson, too, she's a former superintendent. You all have a relationship as well. But I'll ask any of the commissioners now for very brief comments. Okay, anyone else? I would like to speak. Imagine that, Dr. Williams. <laughs> I'm like some of the others. I really don't know what to call him. Uh, I was on the Bronographic School Board when we hired Dr. Williams, and I knew who he was. I did not know him. I knew Sandra from my mental health days and her public health nursing days. And there is no one that I know that has done any more for education in this county than you have. For me, it has been a journey because I also served on the community <coughs> college with him. And he truly has the children at heart. It's not about personal opinions. It's about what can we do to make this right for the children. And not just one group of children, but all children. Very much deserved. I'm <coughs> glad to be involved with this. Thank you. Mike. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? I've been here for 28 years, so I do know that struggle and, and love for the jobs and um, the commitment to the children, and I do appreciate you being um, willing to commit to that. And I also may, I don't know what you were in Warren County, but I was a kid in Warren County. Your reach is a long way to go. Okay, anyone else? Okay, well, you, Dr. Williams, you know I got something to say. And, uh, you know, yeah, brief. It, <laughs> um, you know, Dr. Williams has done a lot in education, no question. And I'm not going to repeat a lot of the things that have been said. He's served at every capacity, as we know. And what Representative Ray said a few minutes ago about the Halifax Community College is very, very true uh, about how he really engaged and got you appointed. Uh, to that community college board, and um, and I was fully aware of what he was doing, and he did exactly that, folks. Um, and I'm so glad that he did because at the time, you know, he had to go through a process when Dr. Elam passed of picking a, a president, and uh, and you have picked a great president, you and your board, and Commissioner Brewer sits on that board as well, and uh, and I think Commissioner Smith was on the board at one time too. But you all have done a great job, and you and I served on the school board together. I was the chair of the school board when, uh, I think when you got appointed or won the election, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, we did serve at least one term, one or two terms together. And Dr. Williams, I tell you what, uh, and I tell folks all the time, especially Chris, because I see Chris all the time in, here in Halifax working. Uh, you know, you, you, you're just an incredible man. You really are. I have a great deal of respect for you. And you're extremely extremely smart you know especially when it comes to numbers and facts um i mean you you just know how to work numbers and i appreciate you appreciate your wife sandra she works as a volunteer at angel's closet and appreciate being your children grandchildren appreciate all of you being here so miss johnson had told me i got to be quiet so i'm gonna <laughs> stop
But thank you, Dr. Williams, for all that you do. And look, at this time, y'all, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you for any remarks, Dr. Williams. Then after we do remarks, then, you know, we'll get into the photo thing. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Williams, and congratulations. Well deserved. <laughs> one, of the, one of the most intimidating situations I've ever been in in my life 
was when I was on the Halifax, he filed it for the trustees. And I was asked one day, is John Smith's presence the altar of invitation? <laughs> 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 but I need to say this. I have never met a challenge, never been given an opportunity that I was not seen through and accompanied by my God. My slave is Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. Whenever a door got closed, the window got open. Whenever a challenge arose, I found the will, the way, and the resources to meet that challenge. And whenever an opportunity arose, I was given the wisdom and the, the courage and the strength to take advantage of that opportunity. And that's all due to my God and my Jesus. Sir. You want to know that you want to know more about that part of my life and the joy that it can bring you and the bad thoughts. Yes. With that I close my remarks again with a thank you that uh provides this question and you know thank you. Now, I'm going to ask a couple of guys that think they muscle men to take this podium and please move it to the side, if you don't mind, so we can, so Representative Ray and um, Dr. Williams can take that photo. Just kind of slide it to the side. <laughs> okay, now. We had girls do it. Representative Ray, Dr. Williams, come up and probably, yeah, you want to probably take that. Okay. All right. And we need to move out of the way. Yep. <laughs> you want us to get closer here to the table? However you want to do it. Center it, Michael. You can center it. You, you come up here if you want to, or you can center Christina it. Christina right can center y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them where to stand. Are they in the center? Yeah. You're centering them to the Okay. All right. looking at me. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to be at ease for about five minutes. The clock says five minutes to six. Split the clock to see if I can destroy Any more answers, we'll take it.
at this time, we're going to ask, we're on the item two, fiscal year 2024-2025, budget discussions. We're going to ask our deputy county manager, Christina Wells, to come up. And uh, she's going to be talking about the school system allotments for 24-25. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Go ahead. Have they addressed 
why why there is a delay. That's a good point. Dean and I have a theory, but I don't know that they've stated. But Dean, do you want to speak to that for a moment? My theory is this year, or when the General Assembly was in their long session, they approved a large sum of money for the Opportunity Scholarships. And those applications, the first round of applications were due during the month of February. And so when I first reached out to DPI, because I've, I've spoken with them directly, they did not address that, but they did say they hoped to have them by the end of March, which is when the families who had applied for Opportunity Scholarships would be notified if they had received one. Really, it was April 1st. And so... I think they were waiting because there were over 70,000 applications statewide for the Opportunity Scholarships, which means, and what the General Assembly changed it to was all families in North Carolina, regardless of the income, are eligible to apply. There are tiers of household incomes that you, tier one through four, but there were so many applications that what I think they've had to do is process all of those and see which of those students who get awards would choose to use them and go to a private school which will reduce the ADM for that particular district and <clears throat> it, it, I also had seen on the news when that when they go back into short session in the coming weeks that they're going to consider another 300 million dollars for this fund because there was such high demand so that's that's what I'm thinking is, is why they've held it. They haven't come out and said that to me, but that is the only reason I can come up with. <laughs> the, we try in order to be, if we have one school system, certainly, but we have three. And so in order to be as equitable and fair as possible and unbiased, we like to rely on those certified numbers from DPI from year to year to year. So we know, however they're calculating, that we're basing our numbers consistently on DPI standards. But this is uh, outstanding circumstances. I can You're ever correct. remember <laughs> when we didn't have ADM. So when you have these kind of circumstances, then you have to come up with a strategy. I agree. And, and I'm wondering if that could be a strategy. Would you like to say more about that? Right. So if you, and you are familiar with DPI and how they do student yeah. um, accounting and, and how they do their allotments, they measure the number of students in about five different ways. They do principals, monthly reports, <coughs> ADM, last day of school, all these kinds of things. If it, if, it, if it comes in the next few weeks that it doesn't appear we're gonna get those numbers, we'll come up with what we think is the best, the most accurate answer, and we'll bring that back to you and show you what we have. And like I said, DPI has a lot of different ways to account. Um, we would just have to pick one that we think would be the most accurate. Yeah. I, I kind of doubt it, to be honest with you. Other questions right now? So this is for you to move along, get your thoughts together, and no uh, real direction needed. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So that will take us into the next item. Okay. Which is our fiscal year 24 25 taxing district rate request. And you're not going to listen to me very long. Because I'm going to turn into this wonderful pool of presenters <laughs> behind me. Okay. Now, I did print two new sheets for you that were put at your places. One looks like this. It was in your agenda, but there was an update. One of our fire departments, a good volunteer fire department, called me today and stated that they had intended to go with the revenue neutral rate, which means that they were not required to appear tonight. So you will see this chart change to reflect. Um, that how good will uh, choose to implement the revenue neutral rate, and they will not be presented tonight. And then one other update, you have 
a list of who would be, be doing your presentations <coughs> tonight. And Thomas Everett with the town of Scott Lamette, town administrator, he will actually make the presentation, but Chief Debbie Hopkins is also here to support him and can answer any questions. So he'll just reverse how I had that listed, and we'll be all caught up. And um, Karen Brown, you're welcome to proceed however you'd like to go, but since we had talked about the school system, I had the school systems up first to present, and then you could move into the, the power tax position. Okay. Thank you. Okay, at this time, we're going to hear from Halifax County Schools, presenter Dr. Eric Cunningham. And I know you got three minutes, as three well minutes. as, yes, sir. Three minutes. <laughs> Let me bring my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on the service. Congratulations. You know, our current rate is 10 cents, and what we're requesting is that it stay the same as opposed to the revenue As you all know, the ESSER funding will not be available to supplement the rising cost of the upcoming school year. That's my first question. That money will dry up of September of this year. In addition, for the fiscal year of 24-25, the budget will include increase and increase due to state appropriated raises, which is 4%, an additional 2% for bus drivers. Hospitalization has increased by <coughs> and the possibility of an increase in the retirement rate. We're still waiting for the increase in retirement rate. That, that figure has not been given to us. In addition, we've had to make salary adjustments uh, to, to stack on top of our state mandated rate. What happens in the school system is that we will receive an allotment of funds, but it will only be for a select group. So what we do in Halifax is make sure that everyone receives and many times we have to dip into our local money to, to keep that equity, that equity flow. So we've had to make salary adjustments to custodians. We've had to make salary adjustments for bus drivers. We've had to, to, to make salary adjustments for school nutrition employees, teacher assistants, you know, already. And that is just to keep everyone needing in Halifax County School. In addition, we just were told that utilities will be so we're building that in. And then we're finally seeing an increase in our, in our insurance, our property, auto, workers' comp. And now they're telling us we, we're going to have to add cyber security insurance. So this is, these are the reasons that we're requesting that our, that our rates stay at this. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Any questions or comments from anyone? Okay. Thank you. And just so you will know, um, and I should have said this before you started speaking, um, Dr. Cunningham, we're going to take uh, the school systems as well as the fire departments under advisement, and we're going to be talking and discussing, you know, later, and our staff will get back in touch with each one of you. Just, I probably should have said that early on. Okay, the next one, um, well, in city schools. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to Ms. Austin. And sorry for your loss recently, too. Good evening. I Good evening.
as well as other items that we need, the packing, the boxes, and all that. And that has to come out of our local budget. Um, and of course, we have to put personnel in the local budget. We projected a four, possible 4% 4 increase into our local budget, as well as an increase in hospitalization, where we're currently paying a 40 portion of $674 and some change per month is what the state allows us to pay for every employee that is paid out of our local budget. <coughs> um, as well as our gas costs is going up. As you know, gas prices are rising every day. One day you come out, is that this rate, come out, come back in a couple of hours, it can change again. Um, retirement rate, we have not received what that rate is going to be from the state as of yet, and we're currently paying 25.2% for matching retirement. In our capital outlay, we did put in some skin, as Mr. Bryant said to us a few months ago. Mm -hmm. We put the skin into the game when it comes to with this move from the hospital to the school to help with the building of the middle school. We're proposing to use some of the capital outlay fund balance to help balance our capital outlay budget this current school year. Um, it's been a trying time to welcome to see the schools as you all go, and we're doing everything we can. I am doing everything I can to maintain the local laws within the district. Welcome to the schools have three schools that is in initial. And when you do that conversion from state funding to restart, it keeps up your whole state budget. So if you have staff that's coming out of state funding, you have to move those staff members into local, and that is something that we have to do properly. <laughs> Look, I know you got the chairman here with you tonight. Y'all been rehearsing this thing. That was dead on time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, Rotten Shock Well, he okay. started with us on April 1st. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, Dr. Thompson had to leave us. <laughs> it is nothing that we did, but he does teach at Lake Forest <laughs> University. And this semester, he right. had a different um, class schedule. So Dr. Shock Well is with us. Um, it's been wonderful that so working with him. And he was after that I stayed, but uh, <laughs> it's been wonderful. And I, that's why I've learned a lot. Okay. Thank you very much. Dr. Shotwell, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, thank you so much. We welcome you to Halifax County and the Welland City School District. <laughs> yes, sir. We do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Okay. Um, well, that's the uh, school systems. Uh, thank you all so much. And now we're going to move to the um, fire departments. Uh, the first fire department we want to hear from is the Darlington Volunteer Fire Department. The presenter is Chief Brandon Hale. Of building a new building. Uh, this increase would help us 
make a payment on the building. Uh, we do not have the funds to just straight out buy them. A um, little bit about Burlington, we responded to 138 calls in our district last year. Um, of those, 30 of them were buyers in our district and all those mutual aid districts. 65 of those calls that we responded to were on Interstate 95, which we do not receive any funding for tax-wise. And that's a lot of expense that we have on that highway we want to keep it out of the university. Um, that's pretty much all I have for now. Okay. Um, do I have any questions for you? I'm a lot of calls. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Okay, the next um, fire department we have is the David uh, Volunteer Fire Department, Mike Mosley, Board Chairman. <laughs> yeah, we, we know you, you're Tank Wheels well and School Board Chairman. <laughs> Appreciate y'all, Tank. Okay, y'all take care. Dr. Shotwell, nice meeting you. Okay, is um, Mike Mosley not here? Okay. Is hmm? Okay, is there anyone here from Davy? Okay. Okay. Um, we'll move move on to Littleton Volunteer Fire Department. We're here from Chief Perry Myrick. Thank you for being here, sir. Okay. Does that conclude? All right. Okay. Tony Rollins. Um, do you contract to provide fire protection services in the town of Littleton also? Yes, sir. And you have a contract with them to do that? Okay. okay. And are you requesting a similar increase? In any indication so far about where that might be? Go or town commissioners. Oh, you mean the Warren County Commission? Gotcha. Okay. 
Thank you. So actually, you, you, you're doubling your rate of what it normally was, right? Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments from anyone? If not, thank you so much. And just like I had mentioned earlier, you know, we're going to be talking about all this later, and, and we'll let you know what we decide, okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, Reesville. Assistant Chief Michael Butts. I think I know him. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Michael. All right. This time we're going to move to Scotland Neck uh, Volunteer Fire Department. We're going to start with the town administrator, Thomas Elliott, and then we'll hear from your chief if need be. Okay. All right.
Spanish language. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, uh, we're going to request with this thing of our tax rate that we could give a part-time employee for the daytime. Uh, as you may know, we lost one of our very own It's hard to replace them with the um, But with your assistance, the question is the great state saying we would be able to have someone in the daytime, not only to inspect the hybrids, inspect the equipment, inspect the trucks, but so many other things that Mr. Hill is doing for us. Okay, any question or comments? If not, um, Ms. Dillard, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate the uh, chief being here as well. Okay. Um, we're going to hear from the Welland Volunteer Fire Department, uh, Chief Michael Sumner. Okay, any questions or comments of the chief? Uh, I, I just, you know, will make a comment, chief. You know, at your request, you know, uh, increase to, uh, you know, you would be the highest in the county at, at your request. I'm just pointing that out for what it's worth. Okay, thank you so much. But we'll let you know. Appreciate it. So you have your town administrator here as well tonight. Okay. All right. Um, thank you all so much for your Presentations, as I said earlier, um, the commissioners will be uh, discussing each one of them, and then, of course, our staff, our county manager, will be back in touch with you, or Christina, our deputy county manager. At this time, we're going to move to um, the next item on the agenda, which is the 24-25 budget discussions, and we're going to hear from uh, Ms. Denton, our manager, and Ms. Duncan, our finance director. I don't know which order you want to go in. Uh, Ms. Duncan will go first. Okay. Ms. Duncan. Thank you all for coming.
Go ahead, Commissioner Davis. You mean that's the, that's the tax rate it takes to cover that? Is it possible, or this is a, <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to ask anyway. Um, man in school, it's not possible to refinance that, is it? Is it in a way we can't do any better than that? In today's market, probably. All right. Okay. Thought I would ask. <clears throat> right. <laughs> okay, any questions or comments of Ms. Duncan? You're so thorough and accurate, you know, we, you just erase all the questions. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll mention it at the end. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, next item, Miss Denton. Y'all ready? <laughs> ready or not, here we go. <laughs> Let's see if I can work this thing from here. Okay. Um, we'll go through this presentation. I wanted to put this up here as a little bit of a visual for all of us tonight. And for those in the audience, I'll email you this later. I know you'll be wanting it. <laughs> um, but I wanted to take you all through this so you can have a little visual, and then we can talk about it while you can see the numbers, everyone together. So let's see if I can do this. Okay. As Mary mentioned, the complete balance proposed budget for 24-25 is $57,940,314. Um, revenues and expenditures are balanced. And it also includes Article 44 funding um, for school systems and the community college. I'll talk about that more here in just a few minutes. Excuse me, my mic is now on. Okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, a few highlights for the budget for this year. Um, it does have funding to support all of our county departments to support and maintain their service levels. Um, we don't have funding based on ADM yet, but the funding is there whenever we're ready to break it down. And if we need to find a new way to break it down, we'll do that. Um, it does not impact your, your total budget. The, the, the $5.4 million is already there. Um, it does fund for contingencies. The big news is that it funds the salary study implementation. And I cannot say that without smiling. Thank you so much. We are so excited about it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here shortly. Um, it funds pay for performance, which is when an employee gets their annual evaluation. It's a bonus. So if you get a meets expectations, you'll get a $500 bonus, exceeds expectations, uh, $750, and an outstanding evaluation is a $1,000 bonus. And that's a one-time bonus that's not recurring. Um, you heard earlier tonight there's some um, expected increases for um, a lot of your usual things that come up every year. We're, we're told from our retirement system to estimate about a 1% increase in retirement. Um, but what our increase came out higher for was property and liability at 17%. So we've had to spread that across um, multiple county departments, vehicles, that kind of thing. Yes, we're told it's one person mm -hmm. for both um, law enforcement and non-law enforcement. Yep. yep, the state's already given us our direction. <coughs> um, your financial big picture, these numbers should look familiar. Um, you're working, you're unassigned, what I like to call cash on hand fund balance is $29,920,196. That does include your ARPA dollars of $9.7 million. Um, your actual LGC, that's your audited fund balance as of 630-23, that's the $57,776,280, which equates to 75.58%. Um, Commissioner Davis, you asked kind of what the requirement was. Years and years ago, the state LGC used to say you have to have 8%. 8% was the, the gold standard, which is like a month of expenditures. That's never been written in stone anywhere. Um, and in the past, probably probably since covid it's really come up to more like a 20% is more realistic. So we're very healthy financially at this point. And many years ago, this was before you and probably many of the people on this board, the commissioners wanted to set a goal of that 18 to 22%. They always wanted to keep that as a minimum. So that that's kind of where that figure comes from. Um, as you all know, this is a revaluation year, which is big deal. And that certainly impacts your uh, tax rates. Current tax rate is $0.76 cents per $100 valuation. Our reval went into effect January 1 of this year. Overall average county growth was around 24.75% um, countywide. We do have to disclose what your revenue neutral rate is, which is $0.67 cents per $100 valuation. Um, staff proposes a $0.71 cent per $100 valuation. That's based on some earlier discussions when we were 
talking about implementing the salary study and all the costs associated with that, salaries and fringes. Um, so that's what we estimated. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but once in a property tax brings you approximately $475,000. So just a round, nice round number for you to um, keep with you. Um, that does not include motor vehicles. It's only real and personal property. My theme for this year is that it's a reset year. Two reasons, pretty obvious. First is reval. Um, this is really important. Um, reval resets all of the property value, so the county has a new baseline. So that, that's going to become important. In recent non-reval years, we've seen growth um, to absorb these increases that we see from salary, um, cost of living increases, operating costs, health insurance, you name it. Um, but in reval years, since I've been here, the commissioners have always gone to the revenue neutral tax rate. And, and in my experience, those have been the hardest budget years we've ever had because you have a new baseline. You have no growth to work from when you want to implement or cover cost increases from, you heard them talk about how much fire trucks cost now. Since I've been here, ambulance have gone, ambulances have gone from about 100 and 60000 to well over $230,000 now. I mean, it's just, you see it every day at the grocery store, at the car dealerships, everywhere. Um, so I just want to make that point because that's very important because you have that new baseline. And that's why we have struggled tremendously in reval years. Um, the other reason is the salary study. I just, I can't tell you how impactful this is. Um, this implements the recommendations of Piedmont Triad Regional Council, which is PTRC, uh, based on position description questionnaires completed by all employees, interviews with employees, and market data. That is important. Every county salary was increased. Um, some did increase more than others. Um, this was not a surprise to us. We saw significant increases for positions like animal control officers and custodians. We have known for a very long time that they were severely underpaid, and the average increases for those positions are between 20 and 34 percent. Um, one change we made internally with your blessing, and <coughs> we're really proud of this, is that starting July 1, if this, assuming this all goes forward and is implemented, the minimum salary for any county position will be $30,000 a year. No county position will make less than $15 an hour. And in the words of Ms. Wells, it is life-changing for a lot of our lower-paid employees. And this, this, it's very impactful. Um, two prior actions of this Board of Commissioners have made implementation of this study really workable and affordable. Um, what we like to call the 2021 Manning Plan, which was to increase um, salaries in the Sheriff's Office and the Detention Center staff. Those increases went up by 20 to 25 percent on average. Mm -hmm. And in this current year budget, you all were gracious to allow us to do an 8% cost of living across the board. Um, what I would say to that is if you have an employee who sees maybe just a 2% a increase in their July 1 salary, they need to add it to the 8%. Mm -hmm. Because that means over two years, you really got 2%. Mm -hmm. um, so the cost of implementation, mm -hmm. including the fringes, we were estimating at about $1.9 million dollars incredibly impactful. I wanted to hit a few capital highlights. These probably won't be of any surprise to you. Um, we have made a pretty big priority of building security and safety. We have added cameras at numerous facilities. We've added new um, key card access points, meaning these things are funded in the budget to be implemented. Um, we have budgeted a new fire alarm system for DSS. Um, building maintenance, we continue to have just HVAC needs. All of our buildings are old and large, and they need a lot of TLC at times. Um, we do have some funding included for some painting. Um, we need some flooring at a few of our EMS stations. Those stations are now 24-ish years old when EMS came into the county. So it's time to um, do some maintenance at those buildings. And, of course, you know, as you heard at a previous meeting, we'll be taking over um, a building that's ours, but it was formerly occupied by Rainbow Rescue. And so we'll have to maintain that. Um, vehicles, these are not all the vehicles we've done. These are just the highlights. 
we have one ambulance funded um, sheriff patrol cars under our enterprise lease and of course DSS and health we have them on a rotation for replacement I'm um, finally under technology we're always having to do software upgrades and we do have funding in there Ms. Johnson for cyber security improvements <laughs> yes ma'am So it sounds like what he was mentioning was that they have to add that for insurance purposes. We should already be covered. We are. We are already covered for cybersecurity insurance. So that's not an addition we need to make. This is for us internally for our systems to be more secure. So that's something they never had to do before. I guess not. But we've had it for a long time, I think. Yeah, we've had it for several years. Um, this has been done probably in the last five years per previous approval by the commissioners. Um, unspent dollars from the previous fiscal year that would have gone into fund balance have been allowed to be used to cover the capital. capital. We've done that again. Um, that number Mary previously mentions $3,944,228. That is funded and included in the balance budget. Um, and that includes everything. That is vehicles, that's service agreements, that's utilities for buildings that we have all these buildings that we have so that covers everything operating expense on that side um, obviously the the big piece is the salary study implementation um, at this point I'm only requesting two positions actually you've already preliminarily approved which is to add two animal shelter attendants for taking over the rainbow rescue building so that we can operate it as a shelter um, one thing, this is really, um, this is a high impact solution. You all have heard from the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. They've always wanted a recreation director. Okay, that's always been kind of their number one priority. Um, we have worked with Cooperative Extension and the NC State through their 4-H positions. We are able to reclass a position to a full 4-H agent and dedicate that position to recreation programming. That would be an additional position that we already have, but we're reclassing it. Right now it's a 4-H assistant, and we would like to reclass it to a full 4-H agent dedicated to programming. So what that ideally would look like is you have someone like Jerry Edmonds, who just left us, um, dedicated to like the camp piece and the, the camp operations, you would have another person dedicated to programming beyond camp, if that makes sense. So we think this satisfies a piece that the Parks and Rec Board has wanted. We think we can make this work. Um, that can come along with assets we already have and then improving on those assets in the future. Um, Absolutely. Does this position extend um, to all of Halifax County? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it's not actually just 4 8. No, their office may be there wherever we have office space, but it would be designed to assist programming in the entire county. We didn't have anywhere else to put this position. So it made natural sense to put it under co-op, but it would be dedicated to like Parks and Rec. Yes, ma'am. Um, other two highlights of the operating budget, um, just meeting, <laughs> you know, we meet with all of our departments and our school systems during March. Um, multiple of them expressed concerns just and they were able to make it work I give them a ton of credit um, over just everything's going up software vehicles you know every supplies they've had to change vendors in a lot of cases um, just something that we've had to just make sure that we're mindful of and then finally we mentioned this before an increase of the total allocation to the three school, school systems um, it's about forty seven thousand dollars and some change 
One thing that's not up there, we do have included $50,000 for a new recreation master plan. So I wanted to make sure I told y'all that. There's all these highlights, but you know, you try to not to pick, but five or six. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Anything for the college? Yes, ma'am. Okay. There, with, without looking, I have, oh, I have it tabbed. There. Well, I just saw you increase for three school systems. It's just. When we, let me, um, let me work off that slide. So, as you know, we don't have our official ADM figures yet. We've increased, it's $47,769 for the total allocation and current expense to the school systems. The 44524 funding, this is where we'll need a motion um, from you all to officially dedicate those funds to education. You can choose to do education or economic development. Historically, this board has always done education. Why don't we go ahead and get that out of the way tonight? If I want to. Are you all okay with that? If you all may have a motion. I make a motion. We approve the Article 44 as a percentage because this past year is the first time we've ever given it to the college. Remember? We always done only the school system. Mm -hmm. But it was for education. I, I think it's appropriate for the college. Nope. Yeah. To be able to receive some. Yeah. Motion made by Vice Chair Brewer. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Webb. Any further discussion? Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Jones. We're in discussion stage. And it was a concern that um, Marcel and I both had. When we did the project and we looked at where our money was being spent, education had a very small part of that pie chart. If we did a pie chart right now, looking at uh, our budget, what percentage of that pie chart would be in prison? And that might not be a question we can ask tonight, but it's just something we need to look at. I know we have it in our budget document. We have it listed as a pie chart <coughs> for the current year. I don't know that we have one ready for the next fiscal year yet. But we can pull the current year because it, it's probably fairly similar. We can pull that. I can put that out there for you. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Johnson? Anything? We're in discussion stage. Is anyone else? If not, all in favor of that motion say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay. Ms. Denton. Thank you. That's one thing off your list. <laughs> um, for Halifax Community College, we have their <clears throat> current expense the same as last year at $1.18 million and their capital at six hundred, and I think that says 78000 and that's what they got last year. They have completed most of their ADA um, upgrades. And Dr. Elliott, to her credit, big time, is that they were able to find some ways to trim the cost but still meet the requirements of the ADA audit. So she and I, we had a really good conversation with her about what they've done and what they're doing. She's putting a large emphasis uh, in this next year on building security. As you know, she started a police department. She's hired a chief. Mm -hmm. Um, those calls will go through our 911 center. And so she's got a lot of security type projects on board. So they're well funded. She's had a very good chief too. She has. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Where we're at. Outside agencies, I'm about to take a break for my voice. Um, this has typically been what you all have had the most discussion about in in most years <laughs> is funding some of our outside agencies <laughs> to take a little bit of pressure off i know to take a little pressure off these particular agencies are already funded um because it's we can prove that they serve a public purpose okay um HNRAA is actually the Halifax Northampton Regional Airport Authority and CPTA by virtue of them being authorities we know they serve a public purpose 
Um, recreation partners, we do have another $30,000 in the budget for rec partners program again for this next year. But we do want to propose a new process for other outside agencies that would like to have county dollars. And I'm going to let Mr. Rollins talk about that for a few minutes. She told me she would. Um, so, in, you know, in each year from you, you've had quite a list of outside agencies that are seeking funding, and we, um, some would be as little as $500 or, or so going to different things of different types from year to year. Um, this year, staff would like to propose that we be a little more deliberate about that and take it out of the budget process. Would you go, Dia, back to the earlier slide? Because I'll say more about these things. These things aren't so much outside agencies as their commitments you've already made, and you, you, you actually have to pay for the most part. Forest service, there's a statutory basis for that. Uh, same for beaver management. The livestock arena and the 4-H livestock show are funded through our funding to the to 4-H. It's not actually going to an outside agency. It's going to the 4-H program. Uh, we have it up there because it's something they do outside of Halifax County. Uh, the airport authority and CPTA are both authorities that you actually created with other counties. Uh, they're not outside agencies in the strict sense of the word. And, of course, the REC Partners Program we've, has functioned very well, uh, which gives me a good lead-in to what I want to talk about next. Now, if you go back to the slide you stuck me with. Um, the Recreation Partners Program, we think, is a good model for doing something we're going to call for now the uh, Community Grants Program. Um, and what we're proposing to do is to allocate a, a, a maximum amount for community grants. And I think we're think, looking at 50000 we're going to propose this mm -hmm. year for that program. And then we're putting together a set of policies and suggestions for you to adopt, but we'll also want to set up a process very <coughs> similar to the Recreation Partners Program where you take applications, we'll review those in a committee that's assigned by the chairman, and come back to the board with uh, you know, proposals for community grants. Uh, for things that could be very with something that the Union Mission has in mind, or it could be something that Hannah's Place has in mind, or some other organization we may not be aware of, that when we put out requests for proposals or applications for community grants, we can receive those and be more deliberate about that use of public funds. So we'll, we'll hope this will be appealing to you. Uh, it will take us away from going through this list of who sent us a letter and who didn't and how much do they want and how much can we give them. Uh, we'd like to budget a certain amount, take applications, review them you know, deliberately and come back to you with proposals at a later time for funding. They wouldn't necessarily be funded on July 1. Uh, like Recreation Partners, it would probably be later in the year when we propose that funding to you, but you would take action very similar to how you've done with Recreation Partners. Um, I hope that sounds appealing, but that, that's what we'd like to propose uh, starting this year. It does sound appealing, uh, Attorney Riles. I guess you got one question, though. Um, <clears throat> organizations such as the Weed Council, you know, Still on the right outside. Okay. Let me, let me kind of finish. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know <clears throat> that would be that would be way above, <laughs> more than likely to be way above the fifty thousand. But I know they probably would fall in this category of right. being a community grants program. So how would that would how would that be handled? I mean, I know it probably be outside or different, but how would it be handled? It it would be <clears throat> separate and apart from this community grants program because um, what the Lake Gaston Weed Control Council has been asking for and the way we operated this year was we had authority from DEQ to <coughs> fund a hydrilla treatment program right. and we did that through Lake Gaston Weed Control Council. Um, I'm assuming they're going to make a request for funding again. They already have. Um, but it's not under this community grants program. It'd be something we'll have to take up separately. Okay. That we'll have to, you know, we'll, as you may or may not remember that the authority that we have to fund the current year 
uh, expires on June 30th. That, that authority goes away unless they renew their MO, I've been here A. too long, their MOA. <laughs> they have an MOA with DEQ and we are funding part of that work under their MOA with DEQ. That MOA ends on June 30th unless it's extended. And then if it is, then we'll have another opportunity to, to help them. Um, it, we just don't know how that's going to work just yet. Right, okay. I don't want to get too deep in the weeds with that. But no, 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 that, The only that's reason fine. they got the MOA with D, DEQ was because of you and, and, and the staff. Well, well but, I don't know. That know. Was, in, was already in place, but we didn't have authority <laughs> to fund some of their work under that MOA right. until okay. we asked for it. But we're, we're stand ready to do what may need to be done to, okay. to do that, And but it's separate from this all together. Okay, and I guess that was my question. Okay. So is this 50000 that also separate from the $30,000 like recreation? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. We would keep recreation partners as a separate yes. program <clears throat> altogether. This would be something other than recreation that might be a, a public benefit, public use that we would, as I've often discussed, if we've got authority to do it, we can contract with others to do it, and that's what this program would, would help fund. I would recommend to keep them separate so mm -hmm. it's not confusing yeah. to maybe do this piece in the fall when we normally do rec partners in the spring and that would keep them separate and we just have to be very clear in our communications that recreation type programs this this isn't really what is meant for um, so you can split them that way do one in the fall you can, one in the and that's part of in, in the drafts that we're working right. on we make it clear that this program is not about recreation programs so we have a separate program for that it's not about housing programs because we're doing something separate with housing under the um, the uh, help me the home consortium home con yeah the home consortium program so we're trying to you know keep those uh, clear it is it is yeah. uh, it could be any number yeah. of things that, that, Fairly broad range, but we just want to be sure that what someone's asking for funding for is something we can provide funding for. And, and then be clear about what they want to do with it and see that they're doing that. So why would CATA fall in this program? Um, CATA would be in this category. As opposed to not being like automatically funded like an authority. I think that's what yeah. Um, CATA is a nonprofit organization. CPTA is not. CPTA is a is a public authority that we created. CATA is a nonprofit organization that does an awful lot of good things. And they I would expect they could submit a fairly you know substantial application for whatever program they're looking for funding assistance for. So we'll basically have fifty thousand dollars of CATA as long as they get what twenty um, someone else? I don't know. That that's close, yeah. Yes, pretty much. Okay. Twenty-one, twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Twenty thousand. Okay. Possibly. Um, I, I didn't. I'm, I'm not saying the number is a good number or not. I'm just saying that if we do this program and you like the way it works and you want to fund it more uh, in future years, you certainly can. And right now, out of all the counties, that's. Uh, Contributing, I believe Halifax is about the lowest county, and I think we uh, brought that up last year, and then we did increase by five thousand. I think but everybody was twenty five. I think above that was right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I think also, too, um, I think this would be more like a starting point. Certainly, you know, the commissions could, you know, see how it works, you know, um, next year or whatever. And then, you know, going forward, we could, you know, even increase the amount if need be. But it could be a good starting point. And, and then, too, up to the commissioners, you know, we can change this amount now. Well, that's the way the recreation department program started out. Mm-hmm. It did, Ms. Johnson. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think Commissioner Davis said at the last meeting that it's a good program that needs to hang around, and she's 100% right. I, I think yeah. there's some benefit to be gained from 
implementing it this way because you mm -hmm. see what programs are actually doing. You, 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 they, they can show you what they've done with their money, and you may find, like with recreation partners, that it's right. something you want to put more funding into from from year to year. But um, it it's it's not the best of uh, procedures to take requests during your budget process. Right. It it, it makes you know for me it's much well strike that. It just seems better to be more deliberate about who's asking for funds and what they want to do with it. And there may, you may find that there are um, some agencies that have gotten much less in the past that could do much, much better with, with more than, than we realize once you've engaged them in the application process and a discussion. Well, they don't really get that chance the way we're doing it now. They're, on, they're listed and it, yeah. It kind of like what feels right. Mm -hmm. But even with recreation partners, <coughs> excuse me, you don't necessarily get all that you ask for. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had as little as nine hundred dollars to thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a process to. <coughs> and I think that historically, with you and Miss Johnson and, and the staff on that. I think that you've all had done a great job of spreading across the entire county. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I think that's real important. I do too. And I think the evaluation piece that comes after that, um, we know exactly how the money was spent, mm -hmm. how beneficial it was to that community. <clears throat> right. Okay. I like, I like the process just because it's sort of like an even playing field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all I had. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Ms. Denton, you ready to start back? Back to me, yes. <laughs> okay, here's the fun part. So the good news <coughs> is that um, we are actually revenue over expenses by $982,000. We are not short. That means you have some options about what to do with this extra funding. Um, I've, lift, I've listed them up there. I'll go through them just very briefly. Please stop me for questions, and then we can have all the discussion um, that you would like to. First option is that you could drop the tax rate back to $0.70 cents from the initially proposed $0.71. Cents. Um, there's pros and cons with everything that you do. Um, pro, of course, it would reduce the taxpayer burden. Um, con, it will reduce your recurring revenue. And just as a reminder, one cent equals $475,000 recurring revenue. Um, and you can do a combination of one or more of these. The second one is we all know we're working on a new detention center, and that project will be quite expensive. You could set aside some of the overage for that project. Um, as we get ready to RFQ for an architect, and they have encouraged us to do the construction management at risk process, which is it's costly, but at the end of the day, I think it's a safer option for the county. Um, in the past several years, you all have done this, and it's very well received by employees, is to do an across-the-board bonus. Um, you've done 1000 for full-time, 500 for part-time regular employees and that is different from the pay for performance bonus so let me just clarify this would be something separate this would be a thousand for everybody no matter how good you are at your job um, for full-time and then part-time and of course that gives employees a bump at the beginning of the fiscal year it's not <coughs> recurring that would be kind of a con um, but the pro is it's really well received I, I hear nothing mm -hmm. but good things from the staff about it yeah um, and the last one is you could swap out the evaluation bonus that we do have funded with traditional performance pay, which allows employees to progress in steps in their grade attached to their position. The con for this is that it's recurring funding that you would have to fund in subsequent fiscal years, and it's quite expensive. Um, those are the various options and the money attached to them. The 
you know, the reducing the tax rate by that penny, you would you would just basically lose four hundred and seventy five thousand in revenues. You can pick a number if you're interested in setting aside funding for a detention center project, or you can just let it sit there. It can sit in the budget and you can decide later what you want to do. Um, the bonus would cost approximately 644000 to do that. Um, this is not in your materials, but if that's something you're interested in, I would actually recommend you use fund balance for that and not recurring funding. We're not pulling fund balance for anything else except capital, which was preliminary of preliminarily approved and this would be a one-time expense so you might you may want to consider fund balance and just pulling that money out of there if that's something that you're interested in and then to swap out the evaluation bonus with uh, performance paid in the traditional sense costs just over nine hundred thousand dollars the net increase from what we currently have budgeted would be six hundred fifty seven thousand and I'm open to any and all questions if that's Enough for your consideration this evening <laughs> till I go to the last page. But you, oh, well, these are all, I talked through these. I didn't swap. Sorry. I missed. I got excited. Um, this is the comprehensive list of direction needed. I don't necessarily need all of that tonight. You're welcome to um, think about it if you like. It's totally up to you. You've already decided the first one, so that's mm -hmm. done. Um, and we do have one final thing that we thought about, like, today um, that we can bring up when it's you're ready. This. It's about your, yes. Okay. Um, this may be, I don't know, this may be easier than that. You want to? We can do this do first now? if you okay. like. Yeah, yes. Let's, let's do that so now. you should have two <laughs> pieces of paper at your places. This is the um, direction you'll you'll give staff and the county staff to take as far as distribution of local sales and use taxes. Um, the county uses the ad valorem method and has for many years. You do have two options though. Um, your other option is to adopt the per capita method. If you do that, these taxing districts will lose sales tax revenue. Um, big time. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was considered by the board probably about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. Ms. Johnson and Mr. Brent. Yep. Um, it was one of the most well-attended board meetings I think I've ever seen. We had it in the old Superior Courtroom. <laughs> it brought yeah. out the ma it brought out <clears throat> the masses. I mean, hundreds of people. Yeah, it was packed. <laughs> so let, let me just please which, explain. What we often forget is that each April, by statute, you're supposed right. to declare what your distribution method is going to be. Um, we don't mean to presume anything, but we, we think it's highly unlikely you'd want to switch from the ad valorem distribution method to the per capita method because of the impact it would have on these other taxing districts who get a portion of the local sales tax based <coughs> on a pro rata share of their total, the levy in their district. I mean, school districts, fire districts, everyone who was here mm -hmm. tonight, um, if you were to go to a per capita method of distribution, just based on population in the different municipalities. This is all about how we divide the sales tax with the towns. Okay. And per capita, some of the towns might get more money, but we would lose the advantage of, of each of these taxing districts getting some share uh, of that. So we just put to you what's your pleasure and you know, pick your resolution, put it that way, because they're, they're both the same except you know, don't pick the wrong one, but um, they read the same, but one's for the ad valorem <laughs> method, one's for per capita, and Mary, don't, don't mess this up. Okay. <laughs> if you have questions, I'll be glad to answer them, but um, we don't have any hard, sometimes we've given you figures for comparison. Uh, we didn't do that today because we're in Halifax County, since we've had the sales tax option, we've always used the ad valorem method from, from the very from beginning in the 80s yeah. uh, onward. We do, need a, we do need a motion if that's your pleasure. We can go ahead and get that done, too. I move we continue to use the ad valorem taxing process. Motion made by Vice Chair Brewers, there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Davis. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. If, if I could, 
let me jump around a little bit on this list. It, it sounded like you all uh, had a consensus to com move forward with the community grants program. Is mm -hmm. that fair to look? Okay, I see heads nodding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can do that. Ms. Uh, Commissioner Smith, on the end, you okay? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, <coughs> your taxing districts that were here this evening, your two school systems and your six fire tax districts, do you have any initial thoughts or is there anything you want us to research for you that's really, really just a decision you all have to make? But if there's research we can do, we're happy to do it. I did have one option that we had discussed internally you may or may not wish to consider but I can throw it out there if you like mm -hmm. right. so for probably the last at least 20 years in addition to these um, taxing districts the county gives a set amount to each of the districts to cover what we call no man's land because there's there's a coverage district or taxing district for all of the departments, except Halifax, and I'll talk about Halifax in a minute, it's $7,000 a year. Now, they don't get that until they produce their reports, their financial reports that we ask for. They have contracts. We have contracts with all the fire protection districts, and they get that money when they produce the documentation that we request via the contract. It's $7,000 for everybody except Halifax. Halifax gets 9000 because there's so many government buildings in their district and they don't see the benefit of property taxes because they're government buildings. So they get an additional $2,000. You have a look on your face, Ms. Brewer. I'm just trying to it all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, can I, because we've got, and I, ne I never mean to, to say the obvious, but, but Except for the town of Weldon and the town of Scotland Neck, mm -hmm. we contract with these nonprofit organizations to provide fire protection in certain rural fire districts. And what we contract to do is to assess a certain tax rate and then turn that over to them as long as they do what their part of the contract is. Um, with the town of Weldon, in the town of Scotland Neck, we have a similar contract with them, but they also are concerned with meeting their own needs for their municipal fire protection. And uh, we're always trying to be a little cautious about how much are we funding of their fire department versus how much they're funding. Sort of similar with the town with Littleton, but Littleton doesn't have a fire department. They also depend upon the, the volunteer fire department. Um, Having said all that, I think what Dia is getting at is that we also, in addition to fire district revenue that we provide to each one, each fire department gets some other money from our general fund. That has nothing to do with the tax rate. It just comes as part of our budget to them if they, you know, provide all the financial data we, we need. Um, and I suppose that's one of the option of you know, assisting them with what they're expressed well. I thought they all expressed very well what their needs were. The, the pro of that is that everyone will get the same thing. The con is, if you see on this worksheet, a penny brings a tremendous amount of difference in each of the districts. So <coughs> their needs are not necessarily, the needs are the same, the level of need is not the same, if that makes sense. So, I'm <laughs> I understand. So what we're saying, when we look at this job, mm -hmm. we're still going to give consideration to this. Is that what you're saying? They have made the request. Okay. So well, that's I, for yeah, you. But I'm saying we're going we're gonna to take a look at this. And in addition to that, whatever this is, is an additional $7,000 across the board. Is that what we're saying? It would be an addition to the seven thousand. I wouldn't say necessarily an additional seven. They already get seven, so it would be some sum of money. That's that is something you could consider if you don't want to consider the rate increases, or you could do both. But I, I'm giving you an option of another alternative if you don't want to consider all of the various rate increase requests. 
Just make it a Mary. Who did we give the increase to last? Raisable. Do you remember what it was? Yes, ma'am. It went from seven cents to nine cents on the hundred. And at that time, was it hopefully to the add staff? It was. Okay. It was okay. Major okay. Major. okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have it. We don't have it handy. It's in our budget ordinance, but we can get that for you. We can do that. One thing the county's done in the last budget year was when we went to all Viper radios, mm -hmm. the fire the Firemen's Association applied for this. Basically, it's a million dollar grant, but it was for the entire county for all the departments, and the county paid the match. The the match was like almost a hundred thousand dollars. So that's one thing you all have done as a county to help them by switch out these old analog or digital radios for Vipers because that gives you interoperability statewide across county lines anywhere. So that's one thing you have done um, was to allow them. They do have the capability to apply for some grants where they struggle is the expertise and just manpower in general. So you heard several of them say that, that they're trying to get their rosters up, they want to add paid staff because now if you have a call during the day, people work and they're not right there in town. They may work 30 minutes away. So you do see that in a lot of these departments that are struggling. Yeah. So Ms. Davis, if, if I could put on my policy geek hat for a minute. Um, this whole idea about how you provide fire protection throughout the county is, is subject to any number of approaches. And the approach we basically take is we're divided up into districts and we tax each district for fire protection. And where you will sometimes end up is where you sometimes find school funding ending up. You've, you've got some districts that have much lower tax base than other districts. And we see that, that's right here in Halifax County. Uh, you, you, know, you can name, if you're on the lake, you've got a great tax base. If you're, if you're down in Hobgood, Arcola, maybe not. So, so our basic approach is to tax districts and provide fire protection. A another approach to that, and maybe combined with that, is countywide, what are we going to do to increase fire protection? That's part of what this $7,000 to each fire department approach is. That's part of what that match on that $1 million uh, radio grant was, was about. You're, you're trying to be sure from one end of the county to the other you've got good fire protection, and it's not always going to work when you've got the county broken up into fire districts. Um, so there's, there's other ways you could even look at, who mentioned the night that they had the building that was fall, built in the 50s? Um, Darlington. Okay, okay. Um, you could even take the approach you could take the schools. You may have one school district that has more capital needs than another. You don't have to fund <coughs> capital for schools on an ADM basis. We do, but you're not required to. There may be one fire department that has a higher need than others. And that gets really difficult to start saying, yeah, you this year and you not. But on the other hand, over time, that funding by district is going to start to get really out of kilter, uh, um, unless you just keep an eye on how good your fire protection is throughout the county. You remember I made the comment, too, about welding. You know, if we approve what they ask, they're going to be the highest one. You know. Uh, the, the question, the other question, and I just, I'm not zeroing in on anything, but if I understood the gentleman correctly from Littleton, they're asking the increase from us, to ask the increase from Warren County, and they're asking an increase from Littleton. That's three increases. Of course, I don't know how much money we're talking about. Or, 
Uh, it is, but I don't know how much I don't know how much call volume they have in Warren County versus right. in the town of Valentin versus right. up on the lake, lake. in Halifax County. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they've got a variety of coverage there, and I, I don't dollar wise I don't know what that means from each entity. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I guess Miss Denton, you've got direction about more information is needed in regards to. Um, I can, so what I have is based on Commissioner Davis's question about what they are getting now and their mm -hmm. revenues from oh. their their taxes. We can do that. Okay. And they're all going to be different. Yeah. Okay. And that's where it's difficult for us because we don't see their individual budgets. Mm -hmm. We we have to go on what they tell you. Right. So that's that makes it a challenge for. Unlike schools, you don't really know what their needs are unless yeah. they tell you from right there. Yeah. Okay, you have something else? Uh, yeah, just if you have thoughts on the options on the extra revenue and what you may be interested in doing with it, if anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure, let me do that. You do not? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I, I really didn't expect to be able to get through another year with one budget work we session. Done yeah. We've done it the last two years, but this is a reval year, and I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to put that pressure on you all. <laughs> but if you want to decide, that's great. All right, so this is the slide where we're revenue over expenses. Um, you have options about what you may wish to do with it. These are, of course, brought forth by me. So I get to take the blame. And what may interest you, if, if there's questions about any of them, we're glad to try to answer them. Or if you feel strongly about one, you could throw it out for discussion. Well, you know, also, too, um, Commissioner, since it looked like we're not going to make it, it look like we're going to have more than one meeting. That's what, that's what it looks like. So why don't we do this? Uh, we, we have the information, and Ms. D are going to present more information as her, Ms. Davis, and, and then, they'll, you know, if you don't have anything else, let her know as well. She can bring that forward. Um, but what I'm thinking is um, just go ahead and study the information. But what I would like for her to do, if you all okay, not the decisions got to be made tonight, like Commissioner Webb said. Uh, I'd like to know what her recommendation is in regards to all this. And we can also think about that as well. And then when we come back next week, be ready to move forward, right? Okay. 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 Right. Me to yes, ma'am. So, <laughs> from a budgeting point of view, Budget 101 says you don't want to use fund balance for anything. So, just hold that over here for a second. However, I don't <laughs> sit where y'all sit, so I try to respect the responsibility that you have. I think you can go ahead and reduce that tax rate to 70. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, there's that. That leaves you over half a million to kind of do with what you like. If you want to consider number three, which is the bonus, that's where I would pull it from fund balance. It's not recurring. You haven't used fund balance for anything else. The staff loves it. It's, it's impactful early in the fiscal year, and we cut those checks in July. Um, that's 644000 You can pull that from fund balance. I would almost let the other half million kind of sit there and let the jail project progress and see what you might need during the year. And we can pull that and appropriate it when you're ready. Yeah, you don't have to if appropriate you're ready. for the jail right now. Yeah, you don't have to do it now. It can sit there. Does yes. Yes, ma'am. The expenditure for the architect would be part of that same project ordinance. So you, yes. can, do, you can make that appropriation in a project ordinance right. at any time. Okay. You, you could have that money sitting there at the ready for whenever we bring you back a recommendation for an architect and we would do an ordinance. And, and if you look a little bit further down the road, 
you're going to retire some debt in 2026. Mm -hmm. And that's something for you all to consider when you start looking at your debt schedule for this project. So mm -hmm. just keep that on your radar that, you know, this project's not going to be fast, it, but it's going to be, we can keep it moving, but by the time you go to construction and all of that, your construction schedule and your financing schedule really need to be parallel. They need to run parallel. But if you time it right, you could do it just about the time you're retiring that those two debts in 2026, and that could go towards those debt payments. Yes, sir. Well, that's the question I had. I was going to ask, how did the construction of the new detention facility factor into this year's budget? Because right there. I think you could do, yes, I think you could do one. I think you could do three. I would do three with fund balance. And I think you could let number two, the balance of that extra, just sit there. And hold. And hold mm -hmm. it while we work on. The next mm -hmm. thing you're going to see is a recommendation on an architect. That right. if That's what we're doing now. So, so far as this physical year that's coming up, mm -hmm. we would not even think about I don't think it would be ready for consideration. I, think, ever, you have I, I think you would have to get through your design I, process. Get through, by the time you get through design and then going out for bids and getting that, depending on the financing that you use, it, it, it could quite likely be that before you start doing debt service on permanent financing, you would have already rolled off this other debt on inboarding and um, okay. The timing may work out mm -hmm. pretty well. Now you might have some bridge financing that's just in right. the during right. construction. But that's you know nominal compared to the debt service itself. And just so, pray to God we don't run into any bumps in the road. So are we saying that we're going to just leave that money there until the project is done? Because we know that the construction for the deal. At, at some point in the next several months, we're going to come to you with a recommendation on an architect, mm -hmm. which would include a contract. And so depending on the amount of the contract, that money would be there to fund it. Once you appropriate it, I mean, we couldn't do it without your approval. I'm looking at option one, and I see the pros and the cons. Like for option one. Once, once we decrease or reduce the tax rate, there will be no going back. Not, not this, not this so, year. so not this year. Remember, <laughs> we, if y'all remember, that happened a few years ago. Now, the manager and me would say rip the Band-Aid off and just go with 71. And then you've got that cushion going forward. And then when you, when you finally do finance the jail project, there's going to be tax increases associated with that. It's just, it's unavoidable. That's totally fine with me. That's just your option. <laughs> just let it ride? Okay. Okay. That is true. <laughs> you tell me, we'll make it. <laughs> Y'all tell me, I'm good. Well, what about as far as the information that Ms. Davis has asked about? Will we need to meet and talk about that, or how will that work? You will at some point, because when I bring to you the formal presentation of the budget in May, that would be part of the proposed budget that, ordinance. That would be fine, yeah. Okay. So at some point, right. I'll need some direction so I know how to put it in to the ordinance. <coughs> Technically, you could give me that direction tonight. You could give it to me next Monday night. You could give it to me at the May 6th meeting if you want to avoid an extra meeting next week. Have we 
always like if they came, have we always grain in it, or mm -hmm. have they? Mm -hmm. Has each fire department ever been dealt with? It? So some of them did it, and some of them don't. You have some that, and again, this is an unusual year because it's a reval year, so some don't want to touch it at all. Those are your Arcolas, your Enfield, Halifax, and Tillery. They're not going to do anything that's revenue neutral. It just so happens that the other, well, and Hopkins, excuse me, the other six, for the reasons they stated to you this evening, want to justify their request for an increase. And this is where staff can't really help you that much, except we can gather information. That's what makes it hard for y'all because we can't, there's only so much we can do to give you the information. And you know, get, looking back at number one, I, I, you know, I'm a team player and whatever majority's board want to do, I will certainly do it. But I really like the 70. I'll get you. And, um, and I just think we need to just take the challenge and see what happens and what, you know. I mean, we just, when the time comes for the jail or whatever else, we just deal with it. Um, but if the board, the majority board, want to go to 71, I'm, I'm okay with that too. But I would prefer 70. When you, when you reduce it, mm -hmm. you have to raise it again. The board's going to get a whole lot of things. Very true, Ms. Johnson. So, I, I think the thing for me, and I know all of you all have had phone calls and emails. Oh, bless you. Drive into your driveway. <laughs> uh, with the reval evaluation, a lot of these people really did have a large increase. Mm -hmm. And I'm not questioning the reevaluation process. I have no problems with it. But some of them are going to see a pretty substantial change. And for a lot of the people that have, I have talked with, they don't only have a county tax. They have a city tax. They have a school tax. So it's not just what we do that impacts their life. It's everything in combination. So I I would like to see us do 70, but I'm going to live with you people because I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, well, I mean, and, by, and, and the other thing, I can't think of one thing. The other thing is, as you all say, by the time you get ready to really get into the production of the jail, you've got a lot of debt falling off. So that right there is going to open you up to some funds that you would be able to apply to the cost of that detention center. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I'm kind of looking at it. Maybe you won't have to raise taxes. Seriously. Yeah. When's the next reevaluation? 2028. Mm -hmm. Four years. Well, you saying one six gives me four hundred seventy-five thousand instead of going down to seventy? Why not sixty-nine? Well, that would make me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> that would make me okay. You got no question, huh? <laughs> 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 if you don't do it, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Well, my hope would be we didn't have to do any of it, but realistically, we do. Good, and, and, good and question, it's, Commissioner. It's primarily, <laughs> thank you for the question. I really expected it. Yep, yeah, good question. It, it's primarily driven by the salary study, and 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 it's it's high impact. You do have other big projects coming, jail being one of them. You also have in 2031, I believe, which is really only seven years away, the retirement of debt, Manning's Man. debt. So you could essentially make it a wash at some point mm -hmm. with that. That's five. That was five cents. Yeah. Manning was a five cent increase. Yeah. Um, I was on the board at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So was Commissioner Qualls, who who really wanted it separated in our ordinance, and right. it is mm -hmm. that yeah. it says seventy one cents for regular operating revenues, and then five cents for the Manning project, and it's supposed to be retired once that debt falls off. Yeah. However, if you have another project, That's right. if you have another project, you might as well leave it. Yeah. And DSS was, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can come to some type of agreement on this seven and versus seven and one, I think that will could eliminate next week, maybe. Well, don't worry about me, I'm good. When we speak about <laughs> Yes, sir. Average, how much is that 
make as far as when, when house, per household. Oh, per household. I can't answer that. <laughs> you know, I was going to do those scenarios, and I ran out of time like what a penny does. It's a good question, too. I can't do it off the top of my head. I would have to do it for you in a scenario. And I would I would do it on like a $100,000 home, $200,000 home, three hundred. dollars Where you're really going to see the impact is on your commercial properties. Yeah. That That's mm -hmm. where they're really going to pay a lot more. Your residential is not as much of an impact. The only thing I would argue about residential is that everything else is going up too. Yeah. So are our bills. So. Okay, so does someone want to put a motion for one or the other so we can um, kind of move with it? Or, of course, I, I don't think we're going to do it. Well, I don't know. We may could do it by consensus. I don't know. So do we say we can Oh, we, yeah, yeah, we can do one and three and put in uh, money to be set aside for two um, if we do go into three. Am I right, County Manager? Yeah, so for, so for number two, whatever additional revenue over expense you right. have, you can just let it sit there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and it can draw interest. You can let it sit there, and if you want to do number three, you, you could still do under operating, but to save that for the the jail project or, or something something else god forbid the economy would tank yeah um you could use that. fund balance for mm -hmm. number three right so that washes number four. i would i wouldn't touch number four this year we're, we're doing a lot i would just yeah i just wanted to put that out there so you could see what it would cost Yeah, it, depending on what you do with the tax rate. Right. That it depends on number one. And three could come from fund balance if we so say that. Because we got, you know, the money is there, so why not? You have plenty of cash on hand available. Plenty. Yep. Well, I'll make a motion. Might not get a second. <laughs> <laughs> that, we, that we go with option one and option two. And we do have an understanding about option two, what's going to happen to that. Everybody understands that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Motion made by Commissioner Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner. <laughs> wow. Can you I know what? Vacation? I'm going to tell you something. I don't know who to pick. Who are you going to pick, Mary Faye? Pick Sam. Yeah, Commissioner, Commissioner Webb. Webb. Okay. <laughs> you know what? You pick Brooke? I, I like y'all to my left. These people head to the right. I don't know. <laughs> Whoever he says is, who are you going to yeah. give the second to? Uh, Commissioner Webb. Okay. Yeah, Ms. Johnson made the motion. Commissioner Webb made the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I tell you what, y'all. Can I ask for clarification? When these two leave, uh, uh, Reverend Attorney Commissioner Webb, I don't know what you're going to do. Can Go I have ahead. clarification? Yes, ma'am. On option three, is the intention to use fund balance? Yes. 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 Could that be a part of the motion, Ms. Johnson? Well, for the uh, and option one to go to seventy. Okay. Yeah, you want for okay. the fund balance. Right, and and that's your second commissioner. Second, yes, yep. Okay. Just want to be clear. You got Thank it. You. Yes, sir. All right. Turn to Rollins. Uh, nothing. I'm good. Um, okay. Let me go. Hang on. Okay. Okay. You have done the first one, you've done the last one, and you've done the third one. The last one that it leaves, and you've done the sales tax distribution. Yeah. So that leaves your taxing district rate requests. So I know what Commissioner Davis asked for. We can get that. Any Did, did you say, then I understand you said that you could have that information and we could visit that on May 6th meeting? Sure. All right, that's what we'll do then. Mm -hmm. All right? Commissioner Davis, that's okay for you? May 6th. Okay. Um, and can I offer one more piece of information that was texted me by the gallery over here? <laughs> oh, the gallery. Um, Good friend. Oh, Christina wants to add something. I'm sorry, I just saw my phone. It's okay. It was just in reference to the outside agencies of the grants program. We 
selected fifty thousand dollars in response to your question, Commissioner Smith, because we were currently, if we if we pulled out the ones we've already funded, we pulled out the authorities, we pulled out the weed control council. This year we funded about thirty-four thousand dollars of outside requests, so we did increase it oh, by sixteen thousand. Okay. Um, and of course, as you indicated, CADA would probably be the largest portion that we funded uh, right. for outside agencies. That's a good question. That's good clarification. Very Can good. I add one more thing yes, before? Okay, we'll have this for you too, the pie chart of how the county's expenditures right. run. Ms. Johnson asked for that. Yes, the largest piece of the pie is public safety. Right. Second is education at 21.33% of the total budget. I think it is. Mm -hmm. So we'll get that pie chart for you also. Okay. But that's from the experts over there. All right. Do you need anything else? I don't think so. We'll do the, the taxing district stuff on May okay. 6th, All right. which negates the need for a meeting next Monday night. Well, okay. On the taxing districts, it's, it's, it's not very difficult. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, five are going to be revenue neutral. Three are asking for an increase. The ones that come. And then three are asking for the, to just keep the same rate right. they have. So that, that won't be too difficult. To pay and we'll get you what, what, their, um, what those tax rates bring them and what the increase will bring them right. we can do that all right that's it i think so yes wow that's enough, isn't it? <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> i want y'all to know i dreamed about this meeting all weekend i hope so she's probably not joking because she may have texted me or i texted her one about I, it i dreamed about it <laughs> okay Anything else? <laughs> Thank you all for your patience. We appreciate it. Thank you the yeah. All the time. yeah, do we appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we try to make it as painless as possible. Thank, thank you all so much for all your hard work. Um, appreciate it, really do. All right, any other business? Item three, any other business? Try to get you all out before midnight. <laughs> Good job. It's not even eight o'clock. Okay, no other business. Anything in closed session? Do you have anything? Mm -mm. No, okay. I, I don't have anything. Um, I still don't have a decision. We still don't have anything All right. for the appeals. We may get some decisions tomorrow. And maybe we'll be in that group of court of appeals decisions. I'll let you know. So you know something is floating out tomorrow? I, I, I know it's they, every two they weeks. Release, they release oh. decisions every uh, okay. twice a month. First and third the, yeah, the right. 911 Court of Appeals case. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Wrong <laughs> I can't wait to send them a bill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nothing in closed session? No, sir. Okay. I know y'all going to be excited about the next one, but don't, don't y'all jump on it too hard. <laughs> adjourn until April 22nd, 2024. No motion to adjourn? Are you sure you don't want May 6th? <laughs> you don't oh, want to do that's right. That's right. No, Just checking. Well, let me ask you this. Do we need to have a motion not to have a meeting next week, or is that take care of itself? Because I think it said if needed. We can, we can notice that it's canceled. Okay. Do we need a motion for that? Probably couldn't hurt. All right. Let me have a motion Just for that. Just to be safe. Yeah. Motion for um, not to have a meeting on the 22nd. Happy birthday. Okay. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Davis, second by Commissioner Smith. Now, y'all, see? They're, they're watching y'all. <laughs> Ready for the question? All in favor, say aye. All opposed? Okay, no meeting on the 22nd. All right, the next meeting is what, May the 6th? Yes, sir. All right, motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion, motion by Vice Chair Brewer, second by Commissioner uh, Johnson. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. All opposed? Meeting adjourned. Next meeting, May the 6th at 9.30.